Hello, I'm Dean Martin with Transmission Digest. Welcome to the Transstar Industry Studios here at Babcock's Media. The topic for today involves a lockup converter problem on Subaru. Uh, the transmission that Subaru uses is called a linear tronic, which is just an inline CVT. Uh, the first linear tronic was a TR690. Uh, what we're going to be talking about is a later model, a TR580. The big distinction between the two transmissions, which may be a plus or minus, is that if you had a lockup problem on the uh, TR690, you put the vehicle up, up on a rack, pull the pan, start checking things. On the TR580, it's not the case because the valve body is on the top of the transmission. So you have to get inside, remove some interior components to get to the cover that goes over the valve body. Um, when you pull the cover out of the way, you can test solenoids fairly easily. Uh, these are internally grounded solenoids. So you just have to pin the positive side of each solenoid to check the resistance. They have had a fair amount of lockup solenoid problems with these um, transmissions. Uh, and it's something that uh, if you haven't seen yet, chances are you will. Uh, this valve body has six solenoids in it. Four uh, 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 that are exposed, two or that are kind of hidden. Uh, the problem with this uh, situation, Subaru does not service any of this separately. You can only buy the complete valve body from Subaru. Uh, up until a while ago, you couldn't get solenoids individually as well. There are some solenoids on the market today that you can get. When you first look at this, the solenoids appear to be hardwired. The, uh, the pins or the spade terminals are not readily visible. The three solenoids in a row happen to be the same number. The lockup, primary, up and down solenoid, the all-wheel drive solenoid is different. Always look at your color code and make sure that you're addressing the right one. But this is the lockup control solenoid. Uh, taking these apart are not bad, and there are some issues I wanted to show you with the valve body. If you remove the solenoids, which of course I have many of the bolts out already, if you remove the solenoids, uh, you can get a sense of how they're connected together. These plate, this is a, a hold down plate that kind of positions everything together. And you have to kind of reassemble it that way. The other two solenoids are held by end plates And we will have an illustration showing which solenoid is which. And this is basically the harness with the four uh, solenoids in question, the first one being the lockup. This connector actually plugs into a connector uh, harness on the cover, which extends out, which you can do your testing on. These are just pin terminals. And when you go to take this apart, even though it doesn't look like you can, this cover can be popped off. The wires are merely shoved back into a crevice on the cover. You can pull it off and there are spade terminals that these two wires hook to that you can just pull off like, like any normal connection. So even though externally it looks hardwired, it isn't, you can get it apart. And again, you can test the resistance on all of these. 
these first three should be the same. Your all-wheel drive will be different. The other two solenoids, as I say, are held in with screws into the uh, upper body and the center body. And they actually can be taken out without disassembling the valve body either. So that's always a plus. So this big, uh, relatively a large solenoid is the secondary uh, pulley, a line, a secondary line for the uh, pulley. And this is your uh, forward reverse solenoid, uh, which is held in by a little clip. Uh, supposedly there's not a lot of problems with these, but again, none of this can be purchased separately from the dealer. So whatever is in the aftermarket is uh, what is fixable. If you have a used valve body, uh, you can rob the primary up or down sol uh, solenoid to use in the lockup position if that's your only option. So it is, uh, it is something that can be done. I do want to mention about the bolts. There's a fair amount of bolts in this, but there are two bolts that are held together with nuts, and these bolts are slightly larger. These are actually lineup uh, guide bolts, unlike the rest, so make sure you get the right bolt in the right hole. Your upper body, which contains the solenoids, as well as your secondary line. There's really no problem. There's no uh, check balls to contend with. The issue has to do with separating the center and lower part. That, if you're not careful, can be an issue. There are uh, small damper valves and springs in here that the uh, valves are pretty much the same diameter. And there are spring tensions that you have to contend with. And if they get them mixed up, can result in a, uh, a noticeable problem. This is, the, again, the lower body. There's really uh, nothing to deal with other than normal valving, normal retainers. What I want to bring your attention to is the center body, which has three spring-loaded screens, but it also has these four dampener plungers, if you will, and three of them are the same size. One of them is a little bit longer, and the spring tension, there's three different spring tensions on these. So when you take this apart, make sure that you get the proper spring tension or again, there could be issues. The valve body is uh, not bad to deal with. So if you're doing a 580, uh, you know, just be careful, use normal procedures uh, that you would for any other, um, any other valve body. But um, again, the main issue so far has been the lockup solenoid, and uh, you can test it externally. You can get to it uh, within the uh, interior, not underneath, even though there's a pan that you can drop uh, to replace the filter. One other thing that I do want to mention on the 580, if you happen to get a, a Subaru with a 580 that's got a bearing growl, there might be a problem because uh, more often than not, it's going to be your drive pulley or drive variator front bearing. These bearings have been failing a fair amount, and um, they have been uh, pretty tough to buy, uh, to acquire. Uh, again, Subaru does not service the bearing separately. It's a proprietary number, and you have to buy the entire 
uh, variator assembly to get it. Uh, these are showing up sporadically in the aftermarket, so I'm just saying uh, if you get one in, chances are this bearing is bad. Make sure you can source it uh, before you commit to any pricing. I'm Mike Riley. Thanks for watching. See you next time.